Hey, in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to turn a braid into a dreadlock. Let's get into it. You guys see that my hair is in braids but obviously this video isn't on me I'm actually doing it on Kellen if you guys remember I did a video on combing out one of his dreadlocks um, because he wanted to see what his hair texture looked like after having it in dreadlocks and one thing people don't know is that when you comb out your dreadlocks your hair texture is a little different at first because essentially when your hair is inside of the dreadlock it it almost perms but then after time of washing your hair it gets back to its natural form put it that way so whatever your hair type is that's your hair type it typically stays the same for a long period of time typically I think from birth well not birth because your hair texture you guys get what I'm saying your hair texture typically stays your hair texture or your hair type rather so I'm gonna be taking that hair that we combed out he wants to put it back into dreadlock he decided he wants to stay with dreadlocks which is cool but speaking of turning braids into dreadlocks I do have my braids still in I think I've had these in for about a week and they've been bugging me there's like some parts of the hair that are just really tight and I don't like when like the back is really tight so I'm also gonna be doing a braid out in this video as well just to show you guys what my hair is looking like after taking the braids out and I feel like my hair is just constantly growing really fast so before we get into all that make sure you give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe if you guys are new and comment down below what you guys want to see next but let's go So this is what my hair is looking like after the braid out, really curly. The tips, I would say, are the most that have been matured throughout that time. Some of the links have gotten a little harder as well, but I'm noticing down by the tip, not like at the direct tip, but down by the tip where a lot of the maturity was happening. And I think that's just because that's the hair that was actually exposed as far as on the braid, because it's the exposed hair to where it's like actually getting rubbed and messed with that is able to mature a little bit quicker. There are some parts to where you can just feel that it's a little harder, and that's what you want especially when doing a hairstyle like that you want it to mature the dreadlocks and of course there are still some that are really loose but as long as they stay in that form or in that section everything's good to go but yeah i just wanted to do that so you guys can see what my hair is looking like right now this is my hair length this is actually the most mature dreadlock i have like it's 100 percent just locked up it's actually touching my lip which is pretty crazy i feel like my hair is growing really fast a lot of you are saying that my hair is growing really fast too it's just really interesting i feel like it is growing pretty quick like see it's already to my lip let's get straight into how to turn a braid into a dreadlock so to fix this dread we got a braidlocks.com crochet hook so this is the dread we're going to fix i took it out before to see what my hair would be like and we also have this back dread that's going to get fixed. As you can see, it's just a lot of hair and then like a tiny dread. So yeah, we're going to fix those with the greatlocks.com crochet hook. Alright, we're going to start by braiding this section really quickly. The biggest thing when braiding is just make sure to braid directly off the head. Don't, don't braid in a certain direction. So I'm going to come straight off the, the scalp. Straight out. This will allow the hair to fall in any direction it wants to versus going a single direction. Obviously, if you want it to go a single direction, you can do that as well, but I'd, I'd prefer it to come directly off the scalp. Obviously, it will lay a little bit more this way, but the whole purpose of doing the braid first and then locking it up is it has that initial like hold with the braids. So even if you don't completely lock up the hair using the crochet hook, 
it still will hold because it's in a braid. So it's like a double protection. You'll also notice that it looks really skinny, but when you start crochet hooking, it's gonna start to thicken up. It's okay if the tip is like that as well, because I'm gonna come back in and touch everything up. So there's the braid. So you can see how the braid is hanging down. Um, so that's essentially what's gonna happen when the dreadlock is finished. It should hang the exact same way. I'm gonna start about an inch up from the roots, and then all I'm doing is gonna be combining the hair. You'll be able to see up close, like me pulling hair from the other side of the braid all the way to the other side. And what this is doing is it's allowing it to lock up. That's all you want it to do, to create locks. And if you notice the length difference between these two, we're most likely gonna be losing quite a bit of length, but it's okay, because it's gonna match the rest of the hair. But if you know anything about using a crochet hook, the biggest thing is creating that initial lock. And that initial lock sets a base for you to start pretty much piling on to it. I'm going really slow right now so I can show you guys what's happening. You pretty much want a, a ball to develop down here and then you match the diameter of it, of the rest of the dreadlock with that. But think of it as building. You can already see that this bud is being created. And this is what the hair does naturally if you allow it to lock up on its own. But obviously that takes a lot more time because all the crochet hook does is it speeds up the entire process of locking up the hair. That's why you can get instant locks with the crochet hook, which if you do want the crochet hook, the link to it is down below. So you see that initial lock down here? So that, it's hard. And all we're gonna do is start building on it. Pretty much stacking all these little braids. You can work on them individually. That's what's really cool about doing the braid first and then doing the, the dreadlock. It's because you could start working on each kind of weave at a time. So you see this little braid right here, I can start working on that and then just take it each one at a time. But I'm gonna just keep building on this. And you can go as slow as you want and go as fast as you want, but you never wanna pull off with a scalp, which is really good why it's in a braid because then you already have the tension pretty much taken care of down here at the root. So you're not gonna be pulling too much on the scalp as well. That's another benefit of doing it with a braid first. But the biggest thing is just trying to accomplish the same look throughout the, the, his entire head. So it doesn't look like it's any different than the others. And one thing that will happen as well over time, these roots will grow out, which those will lock up as well. And you won't even be able to tell that this was a braid. So I'm just gonna speed up a little bit. It shouldn't take that long since this hair is in a braid, but you'll be able to see right here even as I'm doing it, this is how I kind of speed up. One thing that I found out that helps out a lot is if you're gonna go fast, pull it out completely. Don't just stay in one spot and don't ever pull it out. You wanna be able to pull it out completely, even if it pulls out a lot of hair, just how you see right here. Cause you can always pull that back in. This actually makes it easier to lock up the hair if it's kind of messy. Cause all you do is you rotate it and you make it cylindrical. And I find it best to kind of roll it as you're going. And if you notice the way, the direction I'm actually crocheting is I'm going, I'm holding pretty much the hair that I haven't locked up yet in my hand right here and holding the locked up part within these fingers and kind of just rolling and going into the hand like this and then pulling it all together. But yeah, I'll speed up and finish up pretty quickly. A tip I'll give you guys is once you feel it hardening up, go ahead and move on to like the next section. Cause what you don't want to do is to create a really big ball that makes it not look uniform. So once you feel it starting to harden up, just go ahead and keep moving down. Because if not, you're going to get inconsistencies throughout the dreadlock. And I'll go ahead and show you guys what I do down at the tip. I've already handled most of it, but you can still see that it's pretty frizzy which this already matches his hair a little bit. I'm just gonna take it in a little bit more. So you can see how, that's how his tips already are. But I'll show you how to pull it in a little bit more. And then I always just do the same thing, but instead of going side to side, I'm going straight down, pulling everything in. And you only wanna do this at the very end to pull in the last little strands of hair. That's pretty much it. There's some spots that are kind of sticking out, so I'm just gonna do like detail work. So you see how that part's sticking out right here? And come out, grab it, pull it.
pull it right in. So you can see it already just pulled it in directly. <clears throat> All these small ones you can just take out with going in a little bit more detail, pulling them into the actual lock itself. Because sometimes going really fast, you might get a little bit more messy. You're just able to create the dreadlock a little bit more faster, but if you do want to get in all these little pieces, it just takes a little bit more time to pay attention to the detail. Just go in and grab them. But that matches the rest of his hair, so I'm gonna keep it like that. Yeah, it looks super good. It's a brand new dread. Yeah, it, just lost, it lost a little bit length, but that will grow a lot good, though. Yeah. Thank you, Lock Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this back one. With this, we're pretty much recreating the dreadlocks. I mean, you can see right through this. It's just all loose hair. Although this is all created, what we're gonna do is start an initial lock again, and then meet it in the middle. Which is a little bit tricky, but same process as doing instant locks. So I just twist it so that you have the section a little bit more uniform. And then I would just wanna work on creating that initial lock. And you'll be able to see the difference of starting from scratch versus doing braid locks. Takes a little bit more time, but still possible. Would you say it's easier to lock it up as a braid or how it is right now with a little bit? I mean, it's they're both really easy, but with the braid, it locks up a little bit faster because it's already in the form. Like this, I'm creating from scratch. So I'm just trying to get it to knot up down here. The best way I find to do that is to hit it for a while for one side to you get a bunch of loops on this end and then rotate it and then pull the loops back because what that does is it creates knots because right now I can start to feel a knot once you start feeling the knots being created see the initial lock is there you can start going from the side now think of it as a square so you do two faces and then the other two faces which the initial lock's already there this is hard so you can see how that was created. And then now we'll just meet everything. We're building on this knot now. I guess this is a good example of how the hair shrinks as you lock it up. Because you're able to see, you'll be able to actually physically see how much is shrunk. Just even from me doing this, you're able to see, like, look at this clump right here. That's the hair contracting back. Because this was all straightened out. But from pulling it in, this is the hair that st stood out. So it just goes to show that I've already took off about, I would say, a quarter of an inch. But now that after that initial lock was created, it's really easy to go in and um, finish the lock. Is there a way I can stop that from happening? Mm, I mean, it just takes time. Because it's like hair growth. Yeah, with new growth, you just always have to maintain it. Now the difference between creating dreadlocks with the crochet hook and creating dreadlocks with twisting with gel is that when you're doing it with the crochet hook, you can twist counterclockwise and clockwise and keep going back and forth. And that's what's really gonna get the job done. You don't wanna keep twisting clockwise because it's gonna unravel. The whole point of the instant lock is going clockwise and then counterclockwise and rotating it. And you just feel where it needs help. Like right here, it's pretty soft. And that's the best way to indicate immaturity. And I can go in and start doing a little bit more detail where I'm meeting it. So you see how it's a little bit more skinny right here? I'm gonna try to pull this a little bit closer to me that so it's not thinned out right here. Because what it looks like is this possibly could have been an interlock, which that's what it looks like right there. So it's it's really gonna be strong. It's not really something you should worry about, but I can go ahead and go in and make it look more consistent which I think that's good enough. Cause you want it to match the rest of his head. Since we're not doing his whole head, then you just want it to match, which that matches. So you can see, this is all locked up. And I got pretty close to the root too. It's about a quarter, or I'd say about a half an inch from the root. That's the difference right there. One thing I have noticed about the hair that's like towards the back of the head, it seems to grow a lot faster than hair that's in the front. Like you can see the different hair lengths right here. This is hair that's in the front. This is hair that's on the back. I don't know what it is. Maybe it just retains the length a lot better, but that's that. It is standing up a little bit, but it's obviously gonna go down when this hair is down. But boom, sheesh, that's clean. Mm -hmm.
That's nice. I was so long though. That shirt was not long at all. It was like this much. Mm-hmm. It's super nice. Thank you, Lock Dog shirt. <laughs> <laughs> This is nice too. Alright guys, you've seen how easy it is to use the Great Locks crochet hook, so make sure to pick this up down below. Link is in the description, or you can find any other products on greatlocks.com. I just got an email saying that all of our locking gel is being sent out very soon. We're probably going to have that back in stock within the next week or two weeks, so stay on the lookout for that. But you can see how you can turn a braid into a dreadlock, or even just maintain the dreadlocks you have using the Great Locks crochet hook. And You've seen the differences in today's video on how it is a little bit easier to turn a braid into a dreadlock versus just starting from scratch. So that gives you guys some options to choose from, but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you got something out of it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and also comment down below what you guys want to see next. Other than that, see you guys next time. Hopefully you guys do an amazing day. Matter of fact, have a great day. Peace. God bless.